So today we're here at the wilds and we're releasing uh, and reintroducing the American Bering Beetle to the wilds landscape. And the American Bering Beetle is actually one of the most endangered insects in the world. Um, and it's been on the U.S. endangered species list since 1989. American Bering Beetle is the largest type of Bering Beetles. And what Bering Beetles are, they have a really cool life history and ecology. So what they do is they look for things that are dead on the surface. So they're nature's recyclers and garbage men. Um, and when a pair finds um, a carcass, so in American Bering Beetles, because they're bigger, they need larger things like rats or quail or, or doves and pigeons, those sorts of things. When they find, when a pair finds a carcass, they actually will bury it themselves. And then uh, they lay their eggs and it's basically a buffet for the larvae. And one of the cool, th another cool thing that the, the beetle does is they actually provide parental care. So they take care of their babies. Um, so what we've done here is we raise them up um, in our beetle barn here at the wilds. We, we breed them over the winter so that we have enough to release them here. They haven't been seen in Ohio since 1974, so we're trying to get them reestablished. So last year we received some founder beetles from a healthy remnant population in Nebraska, and we spent the entire winter breeding them. So these beetles that we're releasing today are the grandchildren of the beetles that we got last year in Nebraska. So the American Bering Beetle was the first insect to be listed under the Endangered Species Act in 1989. They had been declining since 1920. Um, it's hypothesized that when the passenger pigeon went extinct a few years prior, that that really had an impact on them because the passenger pigeon would have been a very abundant species that was the right size in order for them to raise their offspring because they need a carcass that is around 100 to 200 grams. Anything smaller, it's not going to be enough to feed their offspring and anything bigger, it's gonna to be too difficult for them to bury. So how do you bury a burying beetle? So what we did here is we have golf ball hole diggers that we go ahead and make a hole for the beetles already. In the wild, they would bury a carcass themselves, but we wanted to give them every chance that they can have in order to have success. So we dig that hole with the golf ball hole digger, and then we take a little trowel and dig a little side chamber. That side chamber helps keep the walls solid around it so the beetles aren't constantly covered in soil, and it also helps if we get too much bad weather like rain, it gives them more area to work with so they don't get flooded out. Um, after we dig that chamber, we put the rat down inside that chamber and after that the magic happens. You put the beetles <laughs> right on that rat and make sure they want to stay there, you don't want them to escape. So we hold them there and once they're good and happy on that rat, you put a little peat pot on top of it loosely put all the soil back into that hole and cover it up with a piece of cardboard. We had a lot of different people helping us today. So we had our education department out here with one of their Wilda camps for the week. We had some folks from Dawes Arboretum. We had some folks from U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the Ohio Department of Natural Resources and a lot of volunteers that were just really interested in learning about our program and what we're trying to do to help the beetle. So why should people care about the American Bering Beetle? They're great recyclers for our ecosystems. So they find dead vertebrate carcasses and they bury it and they put those nutrients back into the system. They feed it into their offspring and they take care of all that gross nasty stuff we'd find on the road otherwise. So they're really good at getting those nutrients and all those things back into the system. And I just think they're really beautiful. I, I don't see how anyone could not love a beetle that's just so big and beautiful. And I, I know insects aren't for everyone, but I, I just love them.